Good morning, sir. This didn't work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a big surprise. <laughs> so, oh, <boy. laughs> but they got fortunately they got it worked out. Hello, Morris. Can you hear me? Good morning, Julian. Hi, Marilyn. I'm sorry. Good morning. I was, I was muted. <laughs> Good morning, Dennis and Barbara. Good morning. She decided to join me today. Cool. We're going to see if it works. Um, it's, nice, it's nice to see you two together again. Well, <laughs> yeah, after all Glad the separation wasn't permanent. <laughs> well, when he's presenting the lesson, I think it will be easier for me to be in the other room. Okay. <laughs> so, I, struggled, I struggled all week getting two screens up and running. So uh, I'm looking at my uh, one of my screens. I have another screen to the right. <laughs> so I have two screens running at the same time. OK. And Sam and Jenny are here. Oh, yeah. Oh, Sam and Jenny. How are y'all? And Scott. Good. Scott Hi. is here, yes. Dennis, if, Dennis, if you get three screens, we'll, we'll arrange to have a director assigned to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, he doesn't have room for three screens unless we give him another room. <laughs> well, I do have a third one here, <laughs> which I'm going to use tomorrow night because uh, I'm going I'm going remotely tomorrow night. This is my camera is going to sit on this, uh, the tripod. Okay. Well, uh, Betty Joseph has joined us, and I see Sue Schobel, but Sue is, is uh, we don't have her picture. Oh. Uh, Sue, uh, yeah. Sue, we can't see your face. Still we don't have our uh, video on. OK. Um, and if you two would unmute and just say good morning. <laughs> Bet Betty, I already said good morning to you an hour ago. Yeah. <laughs> unmute. You Betty. need to unmute, Betty. <laughs> so, uh, Marilyn, did hey. at the church did people mingle when we, the people left the church? Got outside and people started to get a little wild. Yeah. <laughs> there was some elbowing, and I even saw some hugs, real hugs. <laughs> Not very many. Hugs, but... I had I had to stop Julian and Mary, and they were running away. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't think it was that obvious. But... <laughs> morning, Rose. Good morning. How are you? Well, good morning, Rose. Rose. How are you? I am great. Good. good. How how is that um, talking uh, Apple working? <laughs> it's working pretty good. It's really neat. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of people that can't see to read very well, and so it's wonderful. So how do you do that, Rose? What do you do? You you, you call like you audio call, books? you call Apple and have them tell you. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh <Lord. laughs> Well, that's one explanation. <laughs> the best one. The best one. <laughs> okay. Well, we have three more minutes. I hope we'll have some more folks join us. Betty? Betty? Maybe still be lingering at church. Who knows? <laughs> uh, Betty, I see that they put you way up in the front this morning. And you finally found a seat a little bit further back. Well, they they didn't have that many single seats. No. So no. That's, that's why I was there. <laughs> oh, OK. But I moved to a double seat oh. when I started. Oh, I didn't realize they had singles and doubles. Yeah. OK. <laughs> Well, I thought 
I noticed there was a section in the sanctuary that was empty, though. Was that right? Over, yeah, to, to the right. To uh, on the east side. Right. Oh. Oh, in my phone. Because I thought they had filled up. I They wanted 150, I think, and I thought they had gotten 150 reservations. I think there were 150. I tried to count half, which is a little bit hard, but I think there were 150. They had a final count of 176 or 179, but that included um, choir and everybody. Oh. Wow. I okay. wonder if that's going to uh, please or disappoint the uh, bishop. I don't think he was saying no more than 150, but. Well, I think they, that would be 150 in the congregation. Okay. Yeah. I don't think they, they counted against them for choir and, and pastors and so forth. Okay. Okay. Good morning, Donna. Donna. Good morning. <laughs> Hi, Donna. How many people are in the choir, Mary? Oh, I think we probably had maybe 12, do you think? Oh. I didn't think to count that. In the choir yeah, lot? that's probably about right. It's about right. Good we morning, didn't Sam and Jenny. But... No. So the small group is going to sing for three Sundays. Okay. Chris was really a very emotional this morning. Uh, she was. Yeah. She, she was. Chris. Yeah. yeah. She read the words of that song and uh -huh. she got choked up. Yeah. yeah. It was, in case you weren't there, it was in this very room. I... I want to send her an email and ask if she will put those words out in the Kairos for the next one, because I thought they were very moving, but I can't remember them all. Yeah. yeah. It was, well, it's a song that the choir yeah. has sung before, so we were familiar with it, but. It didn't come across real clear when she's reading them too, because she was choking no. up and right, uh, right. you couldn't hear part of it. I, I might be able to put it in the prayer letter this week if if you'd like. I can I can just get it out of a hymnal and put it in there. I'll Julian, oh, okay. Julian, Julian, did you sing in the choir? No. Did they ask you to it sing in the choir? I was I was not invited. So <laughs> does that tell you something, Howard? That's a that's a very bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let him tell you that, Julian. There was no choir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I will, I will cover that in, in the lesson today, uh, talking about the sins, five sins that I will make mention of. But uh, <laughs> it'd be open to interpretation, so and, you might miss it. And Dan oh, and Melinda are here, but we can't see you. And Eleanor is here on the phone, Eleanor uh, Woodman. So glad, thank you. We're glad you're here, Eleanor. Well, Julian, Julian, has there been any uh, discussion of Easter Sunday? Well, uh, Marvin and I had a conversation this week. His hope is that we will be able to be uh, totally open uh, either before or shortly after Easter. And uh, so he's, <laughs> he's excited about that. What That's the first week of April. Does anybody know? know? So, you wanted to say something? Well, I, I wanted to ask uh, uh, whether we would have Sunday school on Easter Sunday. Sometimes with, with it being an exceptionally busy day, we don't have Sunday school, but what? He's answering because he's up. I'm up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now we get down to the whole truth. <laughs> yeah, I, get I, will, uh, I will see if I can't find out about that, Howard. But right now, I don't know. In the meantime, I'll prepare. <laughs> Good. E Easter Sunday is April 4th. Okay.
All right. Um, are we about ready to get started? Yeah. Ready? Dennis, are you doing this? Yeah, I'll mute everybody. You, uh, Julian, you'll have to unmute yourself, though, when, when I do this. Okay. Okay, I'm going to mute everybody now. All right, uh, you're tuned in to the lesson today that is entitled Nourishing uh, Holiness. And uh, this is March 14, 21. And the purpose of the lesson is to embrace God's call to live and grow as God's holy people. That being said, uh, Howard, I would like to thank you for the lesson last week with regard to introducing the concept of holiness. And um, this is the second in that um, plan. And um, just as a, an aside, I grew up in Alabama and uh, my father was a Baptist preacher there. And uh, in the small town where uh, there was the Baptist church, there was the Methodist church, and uh, there were two holiness churches, uh, Church of God and the Church of Christ. And uh, we called them holiness. And so when I saw this term uh, in our lesson plan uh, for this quarter, uh, it came to my mind that this was a concept that we did not uh, really look toward as Baptists and Methodists uh, in the way that other churches did. And so uh, thank you for introducing the topic last Sunday, Howard, and I will continue that today. Um, but I would like for us to have a prayer as we get started. So if you'd bow with me. Our Father God, we thank you for life itself. And we thank you for loving us enough to be willing to send your own son to live on this earth, and to give us a, a pattern of what living for you would include. And thank you for his life and his willingness to uh, have his life taken um, by those that were against him. And uh, he died for our sins. And so thank you for, for that. And uh, now we ask that you would be with us in our study of this lesson today. And um, before we get into the lesson itself, um, I'd like for Marilyn to read our scripture and to give us an update of some of our um, fellow classmates. So if you would, Marilyn. Well, <clears throat> I don't have a lot of updates this morning, but and I was going to just mention that the fact that we all enjoyed being back in church, but we kind of talked about that already. But um, what you need to know is we also had a choir rehearsal this week and uh, we were provided us with, uh, everyone was provided us with a black singing mask and we look like puppy dogs. They have, a, it looks like a muzzle on the front of the mask. Yeah, but it gives you space in order to sing and get your breath. Um, I wanted to tell you, uh, apologize to the Kramers, I forgot to put in the prayer letter this week that they had an anniversary. Um, I think it was on, uh, let me double check here. Yeah, it, it was on uh, the 11th, which was Thursday of this week. So happy anniversary to the Kramers. Um, I wanted to tell you that this week also I was the victim of being hacked. And uh, through fear and manipulation, I was taken in and I thought, you know, I'm too smart to be to fall for something. Oh, that'll never happen to me. Well, it can happen to you. And it's a, it's a long story. Uh, there are a lot of interesting details in it, but it's, I have reported it to the FBI, to the Federal Communications Commission, to the Maricopa County County Sheriff's Office. And um, that's just to let you know, be careful. <laughs> um, and let's see, 
does anybody, I, I really don't have any updates as far as uh, people go. Um, does anybody have anything that they want to add or subtract from the prayer list this week? Boris, unmute. You need to unmute, Mars. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. I talked to Connie Livingston uh, since since our last meeting. Uh, I had sent her a Christmas card, and she had not sent out cards, so she got on the phone and called me two or three weeks ago, and I I, I called her back, and we had a very nice conversation. She, uh, of course, is in in bad shape but uh, her voice was strong. She was uh, upbeat, optimistic, uh, still enjoying life. And uh, so I just wanted the, the class to know that she's, uh, she's chugging along. Good, thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I think we all, we've all known Connie for so long and have missed her for quite a while, but uh, she's she's going through a very difficult time, so we will keep her in our prayers. Is there anybody else that has anything to add? Any any news that you know of, or any updates? <clears throat> yeah. Tomorrow is the day that um, Nancy Wilson has her second leg done. Oh, oh tomorrow. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep her on the list. And how, how is she doing with the, with the first surgery? Is that, is that, has it healed up? The wound, I don't think, I haven't really talked to her, but that was a very large wound. It should probably take, uh, you know, a good number of weeks to heal. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sorry she's going through that. Yeah, me too. All right. Well, uh, Chloe? Unmoved. Uh, I don't know whether you mentioned it, but tomorrow is the Vogel's 68th anniversary. Whoa. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Right. Um, yeah, the Vogel's is on the 15th. I'll put that in the letter this week. Yeah, and, it's tomorrow. Uh, just looking, we have uh, Jenna Oliver has a birthday on the 20th. And Marty Scott has one on the 21st. So a um, few little things to celebrate this week. So that's good. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions or anything or shall we just turn this show over to Julian? <laughs> good to go. <laughs> well, this lesson today is um, it's a different lesson and uh, it's been, um, Helpful to me to to uh, be in the preparation of it, and Marilyn has already in indicated a disappointment that we've had this week with the uh, process that she went through in being hacked, and uh, fortunately uh, we did lose about twenty five hundred dollars as a result of it, but uh, it's not. Um, that's not going to mean that we'll have to beg and and uh, and hit each one of you up for an offering, uh, but it does indicate just how prevalent in our society that we are living in today, how we often have problems and disappointments. But in thinking back in my life, that. When I've gone through a disappointment, it has very often been a real learning situation for, for me. And I think that's the essence of this lesson today, uh, nourishing holiness. And that is learning how to live as Christians in a society that uh, does not follow the belief system that we have. Sometimes that becomes a difficult time. Uh, very often, when we're encountering a difficulty uh, like the pandemic that we're presently in, it causes us to stray away from our uh, Christian belief system and to isolate and to uh, 
rather than learn from it, we kind of run away from it. And uh, so our lesson today, at least for me, um, tells me that I need to change my way of thinking and change my way of acting. Because the problems and the disappointments that we have can often lead to a hidden, well, where we are able to find a hidden value in them. And it drives us to the point of being able to uh, uh, use that those problems that are there. Before I go any further, I'm going to ask Marilyn to read the scripture <clears throat> that will better de determine what uh, we will be focusing on. So if you would, Marilyn. Uh, this is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Therefore, get rid of all ill will and all deceit, pretense, envy, and slander. Instead, like a newborn baby, desire the pure milk of the word. Nourished by it, you will grow into salvation, since you have tasted that the Lord is good. Now you are coming to him as a, to a living stone. Even though this stone was rejected by humans, from God's perspective, it is chosen valuable. You yourselves are being built like living stones into a spiritual temple. You are being made into a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices that are accepted, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Thus it is written in scripture, look, I am laying a cornerstone in Zion, chosen, valuable. The person who believes in him will never be shamed. So God honors you who believe. For those who refuse to believe though, the stone the builders tossed aside has become the capstone. This is a stone that makes people stumble and a rock that makes them fall. Because they refuse to believe in the word, they stumble. Indeed, this is the end to which they were appointed. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession. You have become his people so that you may speak of the wonderful acts of the one who called you out, out of the darkness into his amazing light. Once you weren't a people, but now you are God's people, once you hadn't received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Okay, thank you, Marilyn. Um, this, the writer of the book of Peter um, is addressing his letter to this church that uh, was composed of not only the Jews, but also in an area where there were many non-Jews, that is, uh, Samaritans and, and others that were there who were uh, Gentiles. And so that mixture of Jews and Gentiles caused uh, in the early church uh, quite a stir. And, uh, but it was from that mixture that uh, our lesson comes today. Uh, Peter wanted to help uh, th these people to grow in their spirituality. And um, in order to help them grow in their spirituality, they needed to be able to cope with and deal with sin in their lives. Sin has been defined many ways, but it is defined as a word or a thought or a behavior that separates us from God. A word, a thought, or a behavior that separates us from God. Uh, that is sin. And the behavior that Peter is talking about here, he lists five behaviors that were present with that church that he was addressing. Uh, one was uh, the behavior of ill will. Um, if we were able to discuss more freely in our classroom, I would be asking the question, have you ever experienced ill will in your life? And uh, how, did it, how did it affect you? How did it affect your uh, relationship with others? Ill will is defined as an intentional harm to another human being. An intentional harm to another human being. That harm can come certainly by physical, but also by mental and emotional ways. And so sometimes inflicting harm on another person is... Uh, 
a sin that, that we have engaged in. Another one that he mentions is the sin of deceit. And this is defined as intentionally misleading another person into believing something. Oh, uh, Marilyn was the object of uh, some deceit this week, uh, having to do with uh, being um, on a, in contact with some people who were after uh, money and wanting to uh, do it illegally. And uh, so they were causing a lot of disruption in her life and as a consequence in my life. So that deceit was intentionally misleading her. And as a result of that misleading, they were able to gain some money, but it was illegally gained. Fortunately for us, uh, it, it's not going to take us to the poorhouse. And so we're thankful for that, but it was, it was painful for uh, Marilyn and me to have to go through that. Uh, the other one that Peter makes mention of is uh, pretense. And uh, we usually think of the meaning of that term as being, uh, being a hypocrite. And uh, especially in religious circles, we find hypocrites that are there uh, and down through the years in, in various uh, church situations, I've dealt with uh, hypocrites that are in our churches. And this can be a painful uh, time, but it's also a sin. And um, it's, a time, it's, it's part of being able to forgive and then be able to move on. Uh, then there is the sin of envy. Um, I'm sure that nobody in our class has been envious of another human being. I'm being somewhat facetious here. Um, and, but it's, uh, it, it's, envy can be a feeling of jealousy toward another human being. And um, sometimes that jealousy can get the best of us. And then there is the uh, sin of slander. And that is bringing false charges against another person. And uh, that is a sin that Peter is addressing here. The five sins here are certainly not all, but these are five that he is saying can take place in any uh, situation. And we need to be aware of that. So any, I'm sorry. Why is he there? I haven't seen them before. Widers are there. Yeah. I haven't, we haven't seen them there. So yeah. good to see you. <laughs> well, just their name. <laughs> okay, they are somewhere. <laughs> they have they have no audio yet. Oh, ah, okay. no video. They have uh, audio, but no video. No video. All right. Okay. Well, we're glad they're there. We're so glad yeah. they're there. Yeah. Uh, but the five sins that Peter is mentioning here, uh, we've all. I'm sure, um, dealt with to a greater or lesser extent. So, you know, this lesson didn't really get into it, so I'm, I'm going to go off on a, a something of a tangent. When we experience sin in our lives, we are taught as Christians to be able to ask for forgiveness from, from God. I would like to take that a little bit different, uh, a little deeper than just asking for forgiveness. For not, sin is not only uh, not only spiritual, but it is also psychological, and um, tied in with asking for forgiveness from God. I found that there are parts, uh, other things that we can do to uh, feel forgiven not only asking for forgiveness from God, but asking for forgiveness from the person that we have hurt, uh, whether it be with slander or whether it be with pretense or whether it be with deceit, whatever way we have hurt another human being, uh, we need to be able to ask for forgiveness from that person. Uh, the example that Marilyn brought to us uh, earlier with what we've gone through this week um, 
uh, we would like to have that uh, $2,500 returned to us. Uh, <laughs> the likelihood of that happening is probably slim to none. Um, but I use that as an example that, you know, what we can do is to be thankful to God that we are not uh, in, on the poor or not in the poorhouse by as a result, and that we can be thankful for the blessings that we have. So it becomes a new way of thinking. And uh, in the asking for forgiveness from God, I think that we need to develop a new way of thinking and also a new way of acting. Uh, the example that Marilyn has brought to us, uh, we need to be mindful as, as a couple that uh, we don't have to believe everything that the uh, TV says to us. And, uh, you know, it's somebody's opinion that may or may not be accurate. And so uh, we need to keep that in mind that these are human beings that are not maybe of the same belief system that we have. And so being able to use that as a part of our own recovery is vital. So I very often ask, and I found personally that to not only talk about uh, experiences that we have had that uh, have hurt us, but also to be able to write down and um, ask for forgiveness is, is another part of that. So we need to re rid ourselves of some of the damage that is caused and be able to learn from those, um, those things that we've experienced. So that being said, um, another thing that we can do is to reach out and help other people that are going through this. Um, I've seen that to be vital in the 12-step program of Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous and uh, Sex Anonymous and all the 12-step programs that are available. Helping another human being who's going through that can be vital to us in our own uh, continuing recovery process. And I would urge that for us as Christians as well. So, uh, the and you have something to say? say? Say again? Yeah, just to add to what Julian has shared, come in line with uh, the, the theme of this uh, teaching from Peter, uh, especially dealing with uh, sin in our own lives, confession uh, is a good first step in terms of taking care of the problem of, of a sin we've committed and its effect on somebody else. But in in this scripture, and I may be getting a little ahead of what Julian wants to teach, and I apologize if that's true, but uh, <clears throat> we're to be remolded into more holy people. So we need to make an intention of changing our behavior in terms if we've slandered somebody or if we've been in pretense or ill will or any of these things if we have done we need to uh, make an intention and cooperate with the Holy Spirit and maybe encouragement from other people to change our behavior, how we act, so we won't do the same thing again. And so we become more holy and caring and loving and have a better relationship with God and other people. Anyway, that's a thought. Very good, Dan. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, we have a saying in, in uh, recovery that in order to keep it, you've got to give it away. And um, this certainly applies to the concept that we're talking about today. In order to keep our Christian lives, we need to be able to give that away to other, other people that are going through the same or similar situations that we have been through. So um, thanks, Dan. Uh, anybody else have suggestions of how you have dealt with um, sin in your life and how you've been helped as a result of some process. Eleanor, did you want to say something? I would say good morning, but I, that's all I have to add. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Eleanor. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. <laughs> Dick, did you want to say something? You're unmuted. <laughs> no, I'm going to be real quiet today. 
<laughs> Can I make a comment on forgiveness? All right. Barbara and I watched the Nelson Mandela film Invictus uh, this week. The man was in prison for 30 years. 27? Uh -uh. And he came out of jail forgiving everybody that jailed him. And the term Invictus means unconquerable. So it just amazed me, 27 years imprisoned, and he comes out and he forgives everybody that, that caged him. That's a pretty amazing feat, feat, and I'm glad that he was able to do that. But it does point out a concept that forgiveness can free us, and that's the, that's a part of our lesson today. Um, confession can free us from the the um, problems related to that sin. Okay. <clears throat> In my, my own life, I've learned the forgiveness is, uh, is necessary if I'm going to change the direction of, of my life. And so forgiveness is vital in that. But I, it calls me, like with the pandemic that I mentioned at the beginning of the lesson, we've gone through a time in our country where, that we've never experienced before. And uh, we have gone through some hardships personally uh, and as a society as a result of it. But our lesson today would cause us to take a look at um, something that I mentioned at the beginning, to be able to learn, not, not only learn from the process, but to be able to benefit uh, psychologically and spiritually from it. And so, um, I had to look at my own life. As a result of the pandemic, as I look at it, I have been spending too much time in front of the TV. Um, now, <clears throat> during this time, I have not been working as much as I normally did. And so I've been home watching TV. And that, is that a sin? If it separates me from God, it is a sin, my belief. And uh, so I, I need to do something about that. And uh, as a result of this lesson, I'm, I'm going to do something about it. Um, I'm still going to watch the golf tournament this afternoon. Um, that, well, you want to say something? Yeah, I was just going to suggest that probably you should be golfing more then. <laughs> <laughs> well... I, I appreciate that, Ron, but uh, I, um, I'm playing as much golf as I need to play right now, <laughs> and, uh, but I do need to spend time, more time in prayer and meditation, and watching TV is not prayer and meditation. It gets my mind going in a different direction, so I need, as a result of my own um, personal or in spiritual growth process, I need to make some changes there. Julian, Julian, yeah. on that subject watching TV, I heard an outstanding psychologist give a talk about mental growth. Yeah. And he challenged everybody to just not watch TV for 30 days, the uh, news channels and that. Don't watch it for 30 days. And he said, you will experience a character change and a mentality change in your thinking. I thought that was very interesting. I, I would, it's not just very interesting. I would agree with it. That uh, it's a benefit that we as a society have, but it can also lead to our detriment. And so, um, but I can, you know, I'm going back in confession. The only person that I can change is Julian Pickens. I can't even change Marilyn. <laughs> and, uh, I'm being facetious there, but I, 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 need, I need to work on Julian, and I need to make the changes in my life that would draw me closer to God. 
And prayer and meditation is something that I need to improve uh, in my life. And I, I need to make time for it. And so uh, as a result of the preparation for this lesson, I'm going to be doing that in the days and weeks to come. Um, I am going to make another uh, change in my life. And that is, I'm going to take more interest in my physical health. And, uh, I'm seeing my uh, cardiologist this week after having seen another physician last week. And so uh, it's, I need to pay attention to what they say to me. Um, so those are things that I'm saying to you that I need to take better care of this body and this mind that God gave me. And um, at 82 years old, it would be easy to just give up and not make any changes. But I want, I want to do that for my, not, all, not, not just my betterment, but I want to do it for our betterment with Marilyn. And um, I want to grow as a Christian. So those are some changes that I'm going to be making. Um, the lack of, uh, I, I spend some time every day in prayer but I need to be more conscientious about that. And so I'm making that, that declaration to you today and saying that I'm going to be more actively involved in talking to God and listening to God. And I would challenge you to make some of those same declarations. So nourishing holiness in our life is what we can do individually. Also, what we can do as a church, but um, individually is the challenge that I'm throwing out here today. That being said, that's all I have. Does anybody have any comments or questions that you'd like to bring up? Yes, Dennis. Uh, Ju Julian, before you give up too much TV, I'll just pass this out to the whole class. On channel eight, today, they're talking about the history of Christianity. Oh. So if anybody would like to see that, they first covered the early church and now they're working their way clear through the Reformation, so. Okay. What what uh, what time is that? It's on right now. I think <laughs> all, oh. all day. <laughs> okay. Okay. And anybody else? Yeah. Uh, I think this is something that we all need to know. Uh, Julian comes from the only state whose official state drink is whiskey. <laughs> uh, that's sad to say, but you know it's uh, it's it's true. Everything else, it's you know some kind of juice or water or whatever. But Alabama, it's some kind of whiskey. That's uh, where it is. And the only other observation, I think the the um, the imagery in this uh, in this teaching is powerful about picking us as stones, and and it says that in an early one of those early verses how valuable we are. That God has made us valuable by choosing us, not because we are anything in particular in ourselves, and then putting us together as stones to make a building. That's the body of Christ and the church. Right. And then Jesus starts out as the cornerstone of the church the first part of i mean the only reason there is a church is because of what he did and then it talks about him becoming the capstone so he's over the church anyway i thought that was beautiful imagery about uh and me as a geologist you know stones are important to me so i'm glad he used that metaphor thank you for bringing that out dan uh, the whole Part about the stone, it, it is vital. And so thank you for bringing that up. Anybody else? Yeah, Julian, yeah, the golf tournament is on. Say again? The, the golf tournament is on the second hole. <laughs> <laughs> Howard, you want to say something? Oh, I just wanted to say that uh, uh, our society or our nation or whatever uh, gives us a 
poor example of especially of slander um, under the New York Times case, um, a public official, when he puts himself out in the public, you can say anything about him and he can't sue you for slander. Right. And so uh, I remember Senator e. Reed, the former Senator Reed, said that Romney didn't pay his taxes. And um, of course, Romney lost the election. And when they confronted Harry Reid with, uh, did you have any basis for that? His response was in essence, well, we won the election. So what difference does it make? Yeah. And uh, I, you know, I think that is a terrible, um, example for the rest of the nation that we can lie about public officials with with uh, mm -hmm. impunity so i uh, you know i i agree that we need to not slander not be deceitful not charge people with wrongdoing when there's no basis for it i think peter was absolutely right right thank you Howie. I think Trump was the king of doing that. On the other side of it, just sitting up, taking the people down who have really had done bad things. Just what we Dan? Dan? No, no, I was just sharing something uh, sotto voce with Melinda. Uh, <laughs> not, for, not for further human consumption. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for this uh, participating in this lesson today. Thank you for um, the lives that you are leading and ask God's grace and his blessing on you as you go through this week. If there's nothing else, uh, shall we bow for our closing prayer? Our Father God, we come to you today thanking you for life itself and asking that you would guide and lead us, that we might draw closer to you, that we might be honest with ourselves and our fellow man, and in that honesty, um, share with one another out of love for others as you have commanded us to do. Continue to guide us in this whole process of living and um, be with those of our number who are going through difficult times physically, mentally, and spiritually. And uh, comfort them and guide us that we might help them if it be your will for us. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Couple of comments. If you, if you don't get the link for the recording, uh, just go to the subscription on YouTube for the Sun Lakes United Methodist Church. It will appear there. You'll find it. Okay. It, it'll have the title of uh, the uh, the title for today plus the date. Okay. And one more comment. St. Patrick's Day is coming up. I got my green on. <laughs> okay. Well, we, we have three birthdays in our family this week. Uh, our son Dan, his mother-in-law, are on St. Patrick's Day, and the following day, his son Danny. So, <laughs> three birthdays, all all in uh, Bogota, Colombia. <laughs> so we don't get to be with him. <laughs> Nadine, Nadine, and I will celebrate our 68th wedding anniversary tomorrow. All right. <laughs> No woman should have to suffer that long. <laughs> I, I was going to say, did, uh, is Nadine going to be joyful about that celebration, or is this? Ask, is she there? Ask her. <laughs> well, we made an agreement early in the, our marriage that I would do all the talking and she would do all the listening. <laughs> I know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
Okay. Uh, Julian and I don't have that agreement. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, I just would like to express my appreciation to each of you individually, but all, all of us as a group. Uh, this class has been a spiritual joy for me to participate in. So thank you for your participation, especially during this pandemic. And uh, so I'm glad that we could have this way of, of doing it. So may God continue to bless us in our pursuits. These things we ask in his name. Amen. Bye. 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 Wait, wait. Bye. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. -bye. <laughs> We're out of here.